welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 9th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, a cattle rancher in Nevada has declared a range war against corrupt federal authorities in response to a land dispute that threatens to escalate into a Waco-style standoff. Well, I've fought this thing legally. I've fought it politically, i fought it through the media, and, uh, and I will fight it on the ground if I have to. Then, a Fort Hood survivor blames the horrific massacre on the gun-free zone. And the mayor of Louisville is telling carry and conceal holders to leave their guns at home. From my cold, dead hands. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Our top story tonight. Nevada Governor Blass Fed's First Amendment area in the Bundy case. Now this, of course, is Clive and Bundy. Here's a guest on the Alex Jones Radio Show today. You can check out the archives of PrisonPlanet.tv if you didn't have a chance to watch this. But basically, Mr. Bundy, he's a rancher out there. He has some cattle. He has some land that he's fighting over. So he's not just fighting for his First Amendment, but also his property rights out there in the state of Nevada. Now this is Governor Brian Soundoval has inserted himself into the escalating standoff between cattle rancher Clive and Bundy and federal officials by blasting the Bureau of Land Management over their creation of a First Amendment area outside of which free speech is banned. Now this is about uh, 600,000 acres Mr. Bundy is fighting for. He said he was there long before these new laws and rules and regulations, whatever you want to call them. And he says he's going to continue to use these lands. Meanwhile, the feds have cordoned off this area. They have taken his uh, cattle captured, I guess you could say, they captured his cattle, and Mr. Bundy is ready to go down there peacefully and take back his cattle, but the big deal about it is the feds are out there aiming sniper rifles at anybody who dare cross their uh, zone, whatever you want to call it. So my uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Mr. Bundy. I definitely hope he does get his lands back as well as his cattle, and hopefully we can have a peaceful solution so we don't have just this complete overreach of government, government powers. Fort Hood survivor blames gun-free zone for horrific massacre. When the first shots rang out, my hand reached for my belt for something that wasn't there. Something that could have put a stop to the bloodshed. Could have made it merely an ugly incident instead of the horrific massacre that I will surely remember the darkest 20 minutes of my life. Stripped of my God-given right to arm myself, the only defensive posture I had left was to lie prostrate on the ground and wait to die. And I definitely encourage you to go to InfoWars.com and see this full testimony for yourself. Now, the gentleman who was speaking... He was not speaking for himself, he was speaking on behalf of somebody else, but it doesn't make the testimony any less powerful. Now, when we have these active shooter situations, a lot of blame falls on the first responders. And I don't blame the first responder in this situation, because, you know, you're a first responder, you get the call, we get a vague report. Uh, we have a gentleman, maybe two or three guys out there shooting guns, uh, victims. We don't know how many, we don't know how many are dead or wounded to go respond. And then they have to show up and deal with what they have to work with at the time. So I don't blame the first responder in this situation. Good job to you, first responder. But it just goes on to show that when you have an environment where people cannot protect themselves, then they have to rely on other people. And as well-intentioned, as highly trained as those other people may be, they can't be there to protect you all the time. That's why you need to be able to protect yourself. But in the city of Louisville, the mayor doesn't want you to be able to protect yourself because he's saying that you should not bring your, your concealed handgun to public events. He would not recommend it, or he definitely would not encourage it, are his words. Because in the city of Louisville just two or three weeks ago, they had roving mobs. Because you know we have all these flash mobs and so forth. Now some of these mob, mobs are violent, some of them are nonviolent. The ones in Louisville recently have been violent, doing violence, uh, attacking people, also property damage. And, now they have this big thunder over Louisville event coming on, and people have taken to social media. They said, I'll go to the event, but I will be packing to protect myself. They say this on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And in response to that, the mayor said, please don't bring your guns. We have enough police presence here as it is. But you think about situations like right here in Austin, Texas, South by Southwest, you know, overtime for APD, everybody's out in the streets, but it still didn't stop a guy from driving on the curb and hitting 20 some odd people. And once again, I don't blame the Austin Police Department for that. I blame them for plenty of other things, but I don't blame them for this particular incident because they can't be everywhere all the time to stop every crime. So moving from the actions of the police to the overall police state, Eric Holder, ATF planning to use drones. Now this of course is Attorney General Eric Holder, and he admitted Tuesday that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives was in the process of looking at the use of domestic drones. Now, when I think about drones, 
I want everybody to understand that they're finally admitting that these things are domestic. They have been for a while. You have drones on the U.S.-Mexico border, U.S.-Canada border, not to mention all the drones overseas and various attacks, where in Pakistan, the Pakistan interior minister says 80% of the people killed by drones are non-combatants. They're innocent people. Because people think about drones as these surgical pre precision tools, which they definitely are not. You know, to kill one terrorist, they'll blow up a whole bus to kill one bad guy. They'll knock down half a building to kill 10 bad guys. You know, there's 100 other people in the building. And now they're saying they want to bring these things here domestically or have them more prevalent here domestically. Meanwhile, they're going to put them into the hands of the ATF, which ran guns into Mexico under Operation Fast and Furious, which Mr. Holder knew about, according to CBS News, at least as far back as 2010, did nothing to stop it. So, you know, you got a guy who's still in his position, even though he's supposed to step down this year, Mr. Holder, running guns into Mexico, knew all about it, also said he needs to brainwash people about thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And there's all these talks about universal background checks. I bet the ATF did do background checks when they gave these guns to Mexican drug cartels to make sure they gave them to the worst people possible so Obama could go down to Mexico and say, hey, you guys got a gun problem because we have problems in the United States, even though it goes full circle in the ATF, ran the guns into Mexico, and those are the guys who want to get the drones. School stabbing, time to register knives. Now, as absurd as this may seem, uh, they've already registered knives or have bans on knives in various countries, such as the UK. Before you dismiss this as lunacy, consider the fact that dozens of countries have laws restricting and, and outlawing knives. In Britain, you can go to prison for carrying a pocket knife. The idea of outlawing a kitchen knife was also considered. So yeah, you know, every time we have a tragedy, unfortunately, if whether it's a shooting, uh, in this case, a stabbing, everybody, let's, let's go ban everything. You recall after Sandy Hook, uh, it wasn't too long after, a gentleman in China did the, uh, the China slashing, slash, I believe about 23 students and faculty, and now we have this situation here domestically, you know, where we have moms against sharp objects. And, you know, I understand a lot of these anti-whatever groups, they're a bunch of well-meaning people, they just slightly misguided, and it may happen in this. I hope we don't get to the point where we're banning kitchen knives and pocket knives because we all know that hammers kill more people each year than assault weapons in this country. That's the FBI's own numbers, but let's not go on any actual factual information. Feds declare war on affordable and plentiful imported ammunition. Now, this is in addition to the U.N. arms trade treaty. The Fed recently used an obscure vaporware Polish firearm as an excuse to outlaw the importation of cheap and plentiful Russian ammunition into the United States. The ATF determined that the 7N6 cartridge is a armor-piercing round and therefore illegal under the Gun Control Act of 1968 as amended in 1986. And there's also a tweet from Ammo Land in the article, and it said, Who is building a handgun that shoots steel core 5.45 by 39 ammunition. And of course, uh, meanwhile, DHS is having their great big arms build up. Well over a billion bullets, uh, targets of little women, uh, children, uh, pregnant women also, as well as uh, mine-proof vehicles or mine-resistant vehicles. They say they need these for warrant sweeps. I'm not sure how many uh, drug dealers have mines uh, as a part of their arsenal. But that's what they say they need it for. Meanwhile, they don't want you to be armed at all. And we'll switch from attacking your Second Amendment, just your attack on overall freedom. If you're in the, uh, the IRS crosshair, so to speak, because if you're a Tea Party, they want to attack you. And now we have reports of people in the IRS cheerleading for Obama. It says vote for Obama stickers, campaign cheerleading was commonplace. And of course, they, they still haven't done too much about uh, Miss Lois Lerner and her uh, right to remain silent. And you have some situations in the da Dallas IRS offices, but also... They had a worker in a tax exempt, excuse me, tax agency's customer helpline that urged taxpayers to quote re-elect President Obama in 2012 by reportedly chanting and spelling his name. And it says that they're seeking significant disciplinary action against this one employee, which at least they're doing something, you know, because they didn't do too much against Miss Lerner. She just sits up there, looks back at her counsel, says, "My counsel advises me not to uh, answer this question." So they end the hearings early, and you know, people will get mad because you know they don't want to sit there and just listen to her bull. Meanwhile, you know, they're campaigning for Obama, and it's not just Obama. You got Republicans doing all kinds of various dirty deeds and other things. So don't fall into this left, left, right paradigm. There's plenty of people on all sides that have plenty to answer for, and Miss Lerner is just one of them. And we'll end tonight with this, end this segment with this, Heartbleed Internet Bug Pretext for a Web Lockdown. Your bank account information, your emails, your passwords, some of the most sensitive information you store on the internet. 
You trust these companies to keep your data safe. But security researchers recently learned that information might not have been kept safe at all. A bug in the code that encrypts your personal information on websites may have been broken for two years, giving hackers lots of access to your personal data. The bug is called Heartbleed, and it affected 80% of websites, including big ones you've heard of. And this affected big sites such as Amazon, so if you use Amazon or any other of these big platforms, you probably need to change your passwords and so forth because, you know, it's another thing. They're going to use any type of excuse they can to come take away your Internet freedom. But we're fighting for your freedom here at the Info War. So as we end this segment, you can do what you can do to help us out. Buy your war bonds. Get a subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, the special reports, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now stay tuned because after this break, I'll be back with a special report about suspended animation prisons. You know, how they're trying to lock your mind down to keep you in bondage. And also David Knight's going to be giving you the latest on the situation going on in Nevada where people are fighting for their constitutional rights and also their lands. So stay tuned for both of those special reports. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. For our next subject tonight, we'll talk about suspended animation, but not suspended animation, but what can you do with suspended animation? There's talks about using it for prison sentences. There's also talks about the health benefits of a possible suspended sentence. Sentence. Let's talk right now about the Daily Mail. In between life and death, doctors will attempt to save gunshot and stabbing victims by putting them into suspended animation. And it points out that the blood will be replaced with saline and bodies cooled to 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah, much like Han Solo. And you say, this sounds very uh, Star Wars. You know, it sounds like Demolition Man. It star sounds like somewhat like the Phantom Zone. And we'll talk on all these uh, subjects here in just one second. But let's move to our next article. Humans will be kept between life and death in the first suspended animation trials. And it talks about how a hospital in Pittsburgh is looking into uh, the very real possibility of replacing your blood with saline, as we mentioned in our last article, and putting you into some type of trance while they operate on you. And I guess it does have health effects, especially for, let's say, a soldier in the field. I don't know how field ready this medicine would be, but you know, you have your soldiers in the field, your medic, they can put you in some type of trance while they operate on you or get you transported to the, uh, the nearest transport to get you to the hospital. You know, it does have various health effects, but what are the health risks? What are the just overall abuses of a power that could come?